In this session, we're going to demonstrate how to configure Dream Report to connect to a Wonderware historian and how to create and generate reports with data stored in historian using Dream Report. So let's talk a little about Dream Report's Wonderware historian communication driver. This driver enables Dream Report to connect directly to any local or remote Wonderware historian, to expose the historian's tags for browsing, and then reporting on the data. We expose all of historians' native data retrieval modes, including delta, cyclic, interpolated, average, integral, and several others. Now this is important because we can take advantage of historians' low-level retrieval engine, which essentially pre-processes the raw data and only returns the requested data to the client, which in this case is Dream Report. This allows for very fast reporting against large volumes of data or over longer time periods. In this final slide, we'll follow a typical workflow in creating a Dream Report project using Wonderware Historian data. First, we'll open the Dream Report Design Studio and create a new project. Then, we'll open the Wonderware Historian Communication Drive configuration and add and configure an instance to our Wonderware Historian. We can add additional instances to the same historian with different retrieval modes and even connect to one or more remote historians, each with its own retrieval mode defined. In the screen capture, we'll see the various retrieval modes listed as well as the other communication parameters for the communication driver. At this point, we're ready to create a new report. We can drop any kind of tabular chart or calculation object onto the report and then browse the historian for any tags to use on the report. After configuring the object, we're ready to start Dream Report's runtime engine and generate the report. We'll now launch Dream Report Studio and create a new reporting project. We'll give our project a name and then we'll just accept all defaults for now. Next, from the list of communication drivers, we'll choose Wonderware and then select Wonderware Historian. We'll give our instance of this driver a logical name, indicating that we'll be using Delta Retrieval, and then configure it. Let's go ahead and verify our credentials against the historian. Select any data quality parameters, and then choose our retrieval mode, which in this case will be Delta, and add it to our list. We'll add a second instance of the historian communication driver but this time we'll use uh, average retrieval mode and we'll give it a logical name showing this. Again, verify our credentials. But this time, choose average retrieval mode. And since we'll be doing 15 minute average, we convert 15 minutes into milliseconds, which is 900,000 milliseconds. And add it to our list. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to start creating a new report. We'll give our report a name. Set the report output format to be a PDF document. And now we can start formatting the report. So the first thing we'll do is put an item table on the report. An item table will show us historian data over a predefined time period. First thing we'll do is choose now external history source and select which communication driver instance we're going to use. In this case, it'll be the 15 minute average from historian. Select the tags we want. In this case, these three flow tags. Choose a time period and we'll do the last two hours for this report. And then do some basic formatting. Let's put in a table name to display. And then change some fonts, just to use slightly larger fonts for visibility. And that's it. 
say OK. The next thing we're going to do is put a trend or a line chart on our report. So we'll select the chart object from our toolbox, place it where we want it located on the report, and then again select our external history server. In this case we'll use historian delta retrieval, pick our first tag which will be our flow one tag, choose the time period to be the last 10 minutes, add a legend, and then add the tag to the list. Browse for the next tag, flow two, repeat, and for the last one we don't actually even need a browse, we can just change the font of the text to say flow 3, change our pen color, change any axis settings, and we are good to go. And let's just make sure we display our legend and put a title for our chart. Done. Okay, now we're not limited to only reporting on analog tags from our historian. We can report any kind of information regarding discrete or text or string tags as well. So in this case we're going to use an automatic statistic table to show us some metrics around our pumps, discrete tags, whether the pumps have been running or stopped, and over some time period we're going to use some built-in calculations such as number of on transitions, off transitions, it's really up to us which calculations or built-in statistics we want to use. So we'll filter out a few tags, we'll choose those two pumps, and then maybe also find our concentrate pump and our transfer pump. Add them to the list. Let's just reorganize them for display purposes. And now we can choose which functions we want to dis display number of on transitions, off transitions, running time, downtime, system availability. And again, let's set this to be for the last two hours. So this is going to present us with some interesting metrics about how our pumps have been performing over the past two hours. Finally, we give our table a name, do some basic formatting again, colors, backgrounds, and we should be good to go as soon as we've done these last few formats. And there we have it. Okay, so just to complete the look and feel of our report, we'll put a report heading up there using what we call a dynamic text object, and one of the built-in functions is our report name. We'll also put our report generation time in our header. Again, just simply select it from a predefined object. Do some font sizing and justification settings. Align them. And write justify our date. Let's also put a report background, again just for visual impact. We can browse from a list of included backgrounds, but you can certainly add any of your own. And let's just choose one which will complete our report. And there we have it. Okay, that's it. Our report is built and we're ready now to start up the runtime engine. We'll run the project, save our work first, as you'll see at the bottom of the screen, the project is launching, the generator engine is starting, the generator is responsible for scheduling reports, for triggering reports that are event-based, making sure that the reports are output in the correct format, for instance a PDF, emailed, sent to the appropriate printer. Now the report could be scheduled, but we're just going to generate it on the fly here using our runtime management console. And there we have our report for the past 
two hours for our 15 minute average data, the last 10 minutes for our analog values. And there we have an analysis of how pumps have been performing over the past two hours. Number of on transitions, off transitions, running time, downtime, percentage of uptime or running time. So there we have our completed report based off of data stored in Wonderware Historian.